I was going there for one. It's hobby for March from a thousand day is March 3rd, 2021. And today we're going to talk about the major weather change that will occur in the United States um, regarding temperature as we could see temperatures in some areas well above average, however, well below average in certain areas. Well, before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content. Make sure to like if you'd like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content. So let's take a look at the GFS forecast model. And you see this map is based off two meter temperature anomaly um, with Celsius and um, pretty much two meters is a standard when it comes to measuring temperature in the United States and this gives and if you don't know what an anomaly means it's pretty much its departure from average so let's say you have an anomaly in terms of a weather event it doesn't typically happen it's out of the ordinary pretty much when we're talking about an anomaly and you see that in the reds they represent a higher temperature anomaly which means that temperatures are above av the average however if we if you're under the blue in this map your temperatures are below average for around this for this time of the year in your specific location so it's definitely good to keep in mind where your location is where exactly it is because it will give a good idea of whether or not you're going to experience above or below average temperatures this week in the United States. But taking a look at the map, you see this approximately as of right now. You see temperatures for the most part throughout the northern Midwest are well above average, especially close to the Dakotas where you are close to 10 degrees Celsius above average at this point very early on Wednesday. And um, even going to the southeast, you see, well, even going to the west coast you see that you're under well above average temperatures however it's a big departure as you move further south where currently mississippi and louisiana are under temperatures well below average and you see a lot of northeast as well is under temperatures well below average and it's as a result of this trough that was moving through the northeast uh, just a couple of days ago and now it's well to the northeast and while it's well to the northeast it's still bringing pr relatively strong northwest winds however those northwest winds should dwindle headed um as we head more and more into the future because obviously the solar pressure system will continue to move further east to the point where it won't really have much of a resounding effect anymore to the northeast when it comes to those northwest winds bringing down the arctic air so as a result i do expect temperatures to rebound a little bit at least for today and however i do expect it to go back down right after today so this might be the last warm day for a relatively long time for you guys in the northeast well i don't want to say long time but it should be the last warm today should be the last warm day for you guys in i'd say a probably for at least a couple days or maybe even a week or a little bit more than that because after so the day after the warmer around the average to warmer than average chapter you're going to experience today it should it should again dwindle down back into the 40s and 30s into temperatures below average so if you're in the northeast i advise that you should at least enjoy tomorrow because it's going to be your last warm day i'd say in a while for you guys before it get the temperatures begin to get colder again and you see that arctic blast moves into the united states where we could see another polar vortex move through the northeast united states and you see temperatures are well below average and i'm talking about and these temperatures throughout the northeast i'd say are equivalent to in the um in the 30 degree range it depends in which specific location if you're along the cities i expect temperatures mainly hovering around the low 40s to upper 30s um however if you're further in the interior northeast expect temperatures definitely in the 30s and and highs in the 20s in some spots with lows even lower than that so i'd say in north in the northeast you're gonna experience well below average temperatures for a lot of the week and it should start right around Friday when we do see another jet stream dip move through and we're gonna see um we're gonna see another trough move through the United States. If we take a look at the 
um, radar forecast from the GFS model, it gives a good idea of when that jet stream dip will occur. So you see the um, a low pressure will move through the southeast, it'll move out to sea. However, we do begin to see a ridge from Canada move further southward, and that will bring a lot of that Arctic air further southward as well. And this and this um dip will only further enhance later during the run once another low pressure system moves up. Well, I wouldn't say moves up, but moves along the southeast coast and and brings stronger northwesterly winds. But this is going five days out right around Sunday, March 7th. So there still could be a lot of time to really adjust how much that jet stream will dip. However, I think it's likely almost inevitable at this point that a lot of northeast this week will experience well below average temperatures thanks to the strong northwesterly winds that are going to be imposed by this low pressure system that's going to hover over the same areas area for a couple of days thanks to a kink in the jet stream um so definitely prepare for cooler than average temperatures throughout the northeast and even including the great lakes as well let me zoom out a little bit to give you guys a better representation of what's really going on that's going to cause these colder than average temperatures in the northeast and yeah like um like i said the same low pressure system that brought very strong winds to us um today and well yesterday i should say and the day before is gonna pretty much meander right over eastern canada at this point and it's gonna just inter interact with this ridge that's over canada and it's gonna bring strong northerly winds to the northeast which will cool down temperatures below your typical average in the northeast during this time in march where in march i'd say for a lot of northeast, especially the cities, you should the average should be right around the mid to upper 40s at this point. But you guys are gonna experience temperatures closer to the 40 degree mark, the low 40s and the upper 30s. So I so that um temperatures should be well below average for a lot of you guys in the northeast. So keep that in mind and it isn't likely to change because we're only a couple days out from this polar vortex from occurring so i do expect it to be well below average and you might be asking when will we see it come back to normal for the northeast or maybe even get well above average temperatures in the northeast well we could see it maybe next week where we do see um, a ridge that's going to move through the eastern half of the United States. And as this ridge moves further eastward, we're going to see the prevailing southwesterly winds from the south, from the Gulf of Mexico, move up northward. And that should bring that warmer southerly United States air further northward to straighten out the jet stream and push it further northward to push that dip that's bringing a lot of cold air to the northeast further northward so temperatures should rebound right around next week and um i do think that this is likely because there's only so much time you guys could be under below average temperatures in the northeast so i'd expect by next week you should see a rebound in temperatures at least to average I don't want to say it's going to be well above average just yet, even though this model depicts it, because again, I'm going well beyond seven days out with this, and um, and there's still a lot of things that could change. The timing of when this ridge warms off the coast could change, and a, just a lot of factors. So keep a close eye on that if you're in the northeast. But outside the northeast, um, another big change that I've been noticing is is um the midwest where well i wouldn't say a change because it's mainly going to stay um the conditions in the midwest i'd say for the most part are going to stay the same for most of the time let me move let me zoom in a little bit to show you guys the temperature anomaly based off the gfs model oh and by the way the european model is also agreeing that there's going to be well below average temperatures in the northeast and well above average temperatures in the midwest so there isn't any major disagreements in the computer models there are at least right around the ballpark in terms of where they're bringing the coldest the cooler than average temperatures in the united states so i'd say for the most part you should at least um predict you should at least um be confident that you're either gonna experience well above average temperatures or well below average temperatures 
based off of what the computer models are saying right now. But um, if we take a look at what the GFS model is saying, let's move to the two meter temperature anomaly. And you're gonna see that for the, for the most part, it's gonna be well above average in terms of temperatures throughout the Midwest. And it's as a result of this dominating ridge that's gonna pretty much stay over the Midwest and bring very strong southerly winds associated with this ridge. Um, let's take a look at the radar to show you guys this ridge that's going to dominate the Midwest, bring those southerly winds. And you see there's a little bit of ridge right there. And you see that there's a ridge that builds right around the 60 hour mark, just past the two day mark. And this ridge will stay with you guys for a very long time and bring those southerly winds further northward. So expect well above average temperatures in the Midwest. However, there will be a shift along the Pacific Northwest while you guys are under, for the most part, warmer than average conditions in the West, along the West Coast as of right now. It should change because the jet stream dip is forecasted to move through the, the Pacific um, right, I'd say closer to the five day mark where we do see a trough that's going to move through and it's going to bring that jet stream dip very far south and that will bring cooler than average temperatures throughout the west coast and it will bring more precipitation as well associated with this trough. But the good, this might be good news for some because uh, west coast, especially the southwest around the desert, has been experiencing a very severe drought and any sort of precipitation would be very beneficial for those areas. So the good news is that along with this chop and the cooler temperatures should come precipitation, which should help the drought in um, right around the Southwest. However, if you're not a fan of the cold air, the bad news is that it's like, um, cooler than average temperatures. You should expect cooler than average temperatures, I'd say right around Cali and Northwest Pacific. Right around five days from now, I'd say very early next week, right around Monday, you should experience those temperatures dip down well below average, which is going to be a big departure of the well above average um, temperatures you will experience right along the West Coast. Let me show you guys the temperature anomaly. Um, you're going to see that for a lot, for the most part, over the short term future, over the next several days, it's going to be well above average in terms of temperatures along the West Coast, but it should get well below low average when it comes to temperatures um, right around the four day mark where we do see that first chop move through and then that second chop that's we can move through right around five days from now should be much worse and bring temperatures close to um, close to 20 degrees below average. So this could be a big Arctic blast through the do the west coast and you need got and you guys need to keep close eye on this if you don't like the cold because unfortunately it's ex, um it's current we're currently forecasted to see a shift in the forecast which would bring and promote more cold air to the west coast however it would bring well needed precipitation which is definitely very very um beneficial for a lot of you guys on the west coast dealing with a severe drought now in terms of the in terms of the overall forecast, I'd say this is my forecast for the next week, what you should expect and the uh, changes you should expect. Well, um, so for the West Coast, while I did put cold temperatures, I will say for the short term future that you guys will experience mainly warmer than average or right around average temperatures along the West Coast. I should have exemplified that more in this map. I apologize I didn't, but I'd expect, I'd expect for the short term future, at least the next five days to be warmer than average, but heading into next week, I'd say right around Monday, you guys will experience well below average temperatures through the West Coast, so keep in mind that. And all throughout the weekend into next week, you should experience well above average temperatures throughout the Midwest, so keep that in mind and make sure to enjoy the outdoors because it will definitely be enjoyable to be in well above average temperatures. And for the Northeast, I'd expect for pretty much next week, um, you guys should experience much colder than average temperatures. Um, I'd say right around 10 degrees below average in some areas, especially closer to the Northeast, because there's going to be prevailing northwesterly winds as shown in this map, where it's going to bring a lot of Arctic air further south and make temperatures a lot colder 
in the northeast so you keep that in mind that temperatures are expected to be cooler than average and um what and the reason why there's going to be a shift in the forecast when it comes to temperature is because the Arctic oscillation is expected to go back into the negative phase temporarily before rising back up to positive and what this means is that there's going to be that small time period where the jet stream winds will be relatively weak and that'll allow the cold air to meander and move further southward rather than move directly to the eastward during a pod during a positive arctic oscillation since during a negative arctic oscillation the jet stream winds are very weak so there's less of a steering flow to steer that cold air further eastward so as a result it's more like the it's more likely to meander for south into the united states and since we're seeing more since it's forecasted to drop down back to negative i do expect a shift where we're going to see a little bit more jet stream dips and what we're used to during a positive arctic oscillation or what we've been used to for i'd say the past two weeks so keep that in mind um, throughout the United States that you should experience a shift in the forecast especially closer to the west coast where a jet stream dip bringing precipitation and much cooler than average temperatures should be expected while for at least the next week for a lot of the midwest and northeast temperatures will be well below average so keep that in mind for this week across the United States but yeah guys I guess that's it for this video I think guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather content I hope you guys have a good day